because I'm from Los Angeles, um, there's I'm from a well, I live in a very predominantly Hispanic area, and my father's from Mexico, my mom's American, but I look white, and so when I walked in this school. I didn't look like all the other Hispanic kids. I didn't have the dark hair and the dark skin. And so um, because I looked different and because I was different, because I didn't grow up with these uh, young people, um, I was treated different. I was bullied. I was um, assaulted. Uh, they took my money. Um, and so that began the life of wanting so badly to fit in, to be accepted, to be popular, to be liked by people. As this year progressed, I became deeper and deeper involved in the knowledge of gang life and eventually um, made a decision to get jumped into a gang. Um, I got jumped in, which means you get beat up for about a minute and um, you're, you're initiated in this gang that way. And so three of my homeboys beat me up in, in the school library and I became a gang member. And with that came all of the activity, the criminal activity that, that gang members do. Um, assaults, rob, robbing, uh, robbery, burglary, um, murder, even murder. Um, there was even an instance where uh, a rival gang came by my house and they shot six times. So as they were driving in front of my house, they were just bam, 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 bam. Had my parents been in bed, it would have shot my mom in the head and the upper chest right here on the side and in the thigh and the same, same as my dad. Um, and you would have thought that at that time I would have been like, oh, this is it. This is, I mean, you know, my parents could have been killed had God not intervened, but it wasn't. I made me angry. Um, it made me go and tell my homeboys so they could take care of business. Um, so during this time, I actually was in a relationship with um, one of my homeboys, in a relationship, a sexual relationship. And I, we were dating and, and with that was the expectations of sex. And I obliged him. And a um, uh, couple months later, I found out I was pregnant. So uh, I would continue partying. I mean, my son was about a year and a half old at this time. Uh, continued going out, smoking weed and, and drinking and, and being in the party scene. Um, until one day, my mom, she just said, I, I, I can't keep going on like this. I'm going to die. I mean, I'm staying up all hours of the night. I'm watching Joshua, my first son. Um, I am, I am doing all these things, and I'm, I'm trying to, to help you. And I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. And so I said, Well, what are you telling me? You want me to, you want me to get out of the house? Are you kicking me out of the house? I make nine dollars an hour. I have a kid. There's no way. I mean, but deep down on the side, it wasn't that I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to sustain my life. I wasn't going to be able to party anymore is my, my whole thought process. About a week passed and I remember coming in and my mom was on the phone and uh, she said, you need to pack your things. And I said, where am I going to go? I don't have a place to go. And she said, you're going to Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm like, what the heck is Cleveland, Tennessee? And she's like, oh, it's, it's on the other side of the country. You're going there. I was like, for what? And she said, because you're going to go to Lee College. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I called my boyfriend at that time and I said, I need you to come pick me up because my mom is sending me to Tennessee. And he's like, okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Well, my bags were already packed. My mom had already packed my bag. So all I had to do was just put them in the car and go. And so I waited and waited and waited and he never showed up. And so someone had told me about a choir, a black gospel choir that was there at Lee. And I love music. I love singing. And so I thought, well, I'll go try out for the choir. And I made it. And so this choir, these people in this choir became my closest friends. And they were all Christian. And they all loved me. And they didn't want anything from me. And they didn't, um, they didn't treat me bad. And it was just completely opposite than what I was used to. Um, it was so real and so relevant and so strong that um, one night in February of 1996, we had a, a man come for a revival. And I don't remember what he said, uh, anything that night except one phrase, aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of running from Christ? And I remember that night I went down the altar and I, I asked the Lord for forgiveness and I rededicated my life to be committed to him.
In 2001, I graduated from Lee University with a, uh, a degree in intercultural studies. Since that time, I've been a police officer at Cleveland Police Department. The Lord has expanded my, my mission field to share my story with so many people um, so that he ultimately can be glorified.